Hi everyone, welcome to another video with iLearn Engineering. My name is Leslie and today we're going to look at control units. Um, maybe something you've heard of before and maybe not, but by the time you finish watching this video you'll know a lot more about them. So the control unit lives in the CPU or the central processing unit of the computer, which is like the brain of the computer if you like. Um, and the control unit doesn't carry out any data processing, but it does control the operations of different parts of the computer. Um, and it was included as part of the von Neumann architecture, which is something you also may have heard of. Um, so John von Neumann, he invented, or he came up with his theory of the von Neumann architecture in 1945. Um, he, he did a lot of pioneering work in computer science, mathematics and um, and physics as well. But he came up with a von Neumann architecture and that was the the, the layout of the, the processor and the CPU within a computer. And the, it's still it's still being used today. That layout is still being used today. So the control unit part of that will tell the computer's memory what to do it will tell the input and output devices what to do so that would be your keyboard your mouse your monitor um speakers you know all that all that kind of stuff it will it will control them it will um tell them all how to respond to the instructions that are being processed so if we're running a program programs made up of of lines of code or instructions and it will you know maybe an, a, an example instruction will say we have to print out on the screen and ask the user to type in a piece of data. And then when they've done that, we'll store it in a variable. So the control unit will tell the monitor what to display on the screen. In response to this um, this line of code, it will it will tell the keyboard to take in whatever way as the user have typed in. It will tell the, the different areas of memory to store that variable and, and so on. Um, so it will fetch the different instructions tell the components what to do it doesn't do anything with the data so it doesn't carry out any calculations or anything like that but it controls the those different devices and it does that with control signals so it will receive the input information it will receive that instruction it converts that into control signals and then they're sent to the cpu and it will it will process things um and the cpu the the control unit um sorry the functions that it will perform depend on the type of the CPU that we have um different different CPUs will vary just depending on different manufacturers um so there will be something called a control processing unit a type of CPU they will use a control unit there are graphics processing units or GPUs um and they will they will use control units and things like that. The image that you can see on the screen here is a block diagram of the control unit. So you can see that a lot of things go into the control unit and things will go out as well. So the instruction register that you see up at the top, um, it will it holds the instructions. So that's the lines of code, basically. They go into the control unit. It will figure out what it's what it's supposed to do there different flags will go in um, there will be information coming in from the different buses like the control bus and um, information will go in from the clock and the cpu and the control unit will figure out what everything is meant to be doing it will send control signals via the control bus to the different um the other different components in the computer it will send control signals out within the cpu it will basically tell everybody what to do um, you know, it'll tell all the different components. So it interprets those instructions. It coordinates the sequence of data movements. So there's different there's different subunits and different registers and, and pieces of memory in the processor. And we'll talk about this in other videos in more detail. And data will move between them as the program is run or as we as a user are interacting with the computer. And the control unit coordinates the movement of that data. So where it goes, where it comes from, where it goes to. Um, it controls all the data flow inside the processor. 
it can receive an external instruction. So that could be us hitting a key on our keyboard. It could be us doing something with the mouse, with the monitor, um, you know, starting a program, something like that. So it, it receives those external instructions. It converts them to control signals and fires that out and tells components what to do. Um, it can control the different execution units within the computer. So we have data buffers, we have registers, we have the arithmetic and logic unit. It will control those as well um, and tell them what to do. And it can it can just handle a lot of different tasks. Um, you know, it, it's it's pretty important. Um, and we have two types of control units. So there's what we call a hardwired control unit and what we call a microprogrammable control unit. Um, so the hardwired control unit, um, it's it gets those control signals and it passes out those control signals with specially designed hardware logic circuits. Um, and that, that's how it works. So it will it will do everything in a more hardwired kind of way. Um, and you know, we could probably talk for hours <laughs> on a hardwired control unit versus a microprogrammable control unit. So we'll just give you the the kind of um the kind of high level version for now. Um so the hardwired one is based really on those hardwired um units. Whereas the microprogrammable one it is um you'll be shocked to know programmable. <laughs> so certain things are um you know certain instructions are fetched and carried out and done in a way that's not hardwired so it's not set to always work like that it can be programmed um and and changed um in you know at, at times that we need it so that's the main difference between them one is it's set it works like that that's it and then one is um you know that it can be changed as well um and if we have a well designed control unit especially if it's a microprogrammable one which we've which we've done some changes to, um, it's going to be very efficient at executing those instructions. So as instructions are, are executed, the instructions come from the programs that we're running on the computer, right? And if we're not being able to be quite efficient with executing those, our programs will run slower. And we'll notice as the user will notice that things are, are, are quite slow. Um, so it can it can make sure that things are a lot more efficient in terms of that execution of those instructions. Um, it can increase things like the clock speed. So the clock is like the metronome of the computer. Almost if you play music, you'll know what a metronome like and it keeps it keeps musicians in time and we set the time and it's like tick, 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 tick and and keeps keeps everyone in, in an orchestra that in time. The clock in a computer will send out these electrical pulses and everything operates to the time of those pulses. So if this if the control unit increases the clock speed, more pulses are shut out, more tasks can be done at the same time. So it can it can help to improve the performance of the CPU there. Um, it will have support for more complex instructions as well, so we can carry out more complex things. Um, and it, that means that every instruction will be able to carry out multiple operations. So we need less, um, we need less instructions and we can be a lot more efficient there. Um, they can be a lot more reliable as well. They can detect and correct errors. So there could be like memory errors and things like that in the CPU and the control unit can detect those and then correct them. Um, if it's a well-designed control unit, they won't need as much power. So lower compar lower power consumption, and that's obviously really important, um, you know, for the environment and things like that, and also for your electricity bill. So it's um it's good for us on the environment. Um, it also can have what we call increased scalability. So scalability is the ability to increase or decrease something as needed. Um, so if we say you know, our, our space in the cloud, for example, is scalable. It means we can increase it when we need to. We can add on more storage. So 
it can increase scalability for the CPU, which means that the CPU can handle larger workloads and it can handle more complex workloads. Um, a well designed pro a well designed control unit can improve the security of the CPU as well, which is which is always always important. Um, so it can help to prevent the data on our machines, and they can have a lower cost as well. Um, now we can also have poorly designed control units, um, and they, you know, they will have a negative effect on the CPU. So they'll reduce performance of the CPU. Um, they'll increase the complexity of how everything runs in the CPU, which again, will um, you know, it may make things harder in the CPU. It, it reduces performance. They'll use more power, um, than we would want them to. They are not as reliable. There's limitations on the types of instructions that we can carry out or how complex those instructions are. It doesn't use resources efficiently. It's not as scalable. Um, so we can't we can't handle larger or more complex workloads that we might want to. There's more security vulnerabilities, it's um it's higher cost, and you know, things like that that we're not we're not keen on. So it's quite important to have a well a well um programmed and, and set up um, control unit. So that's a little bit about control units. Hopefully you find that interesting. We will have other videos where we're talking specifically about all of the different components of the CPU. So how they all work and how they all interact with each other. And we'll talk about the fetch decode execute cycle as well, which the control unit plays a big part in. So that'll give you a little bit more of an insight into control units, but hopefully Hopefully for now um, you find that quite interesting and you've, you've learned something. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.